back to Tranquility Du Jour, nourishing conversations about living a full and meaningful life with doses of tranquility. I'm your host, Kimberly Wilson, bringing you tranquility since 2005 through this medium. So today we're talking about menopause, managing menopause with the lovely guest, Marion Stewart. And she has a new book called Managing Your Menopause Naturally. So in today's episode, you're going to learn about her six-week natural menopause solution, tips for success, and recommendations navigating this time in your life with more ease. Also, I just finished a book called The New Hot, and I'll have a link to that in the show notes also, that was another book that's quite good on perimenopause, menopause in general, that you may also find interesting. So, so excited to be here and to share this episode with you. Before we dive in, just a few notes. Um, A reminder to hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app so that you don't miss an episode. Also, we have a few things that are coming up that I'm so excited about, quite a bit. Uh, March 21st is our next free TDJ Live Masterclass. And there's a link to sign up for that in the show notes, which can be found at KimberlyWilson.com slash 531. Also, on March 27th, we're having another TDJ style pop-up, and this is where I will show you a peek into creating a capsule wardrobe. You're going to hear from some TDJ uh, aficionados who have worn the clothing line for years and love to mix and match it. And then also on April 3rd is our next virtual retreat. So you can learn more about these and get links to them in the show notes. Hello there. I would love to invite you to join me in a group of like-hearted souls from around the world for a three-hour, half-day virtual retreat happening on Saturday, April the 3rd. This is your opportunity to hit the reset button through journaling, an all-level yoga and meditation practice, and creative play with art journaling. Together, we'll create an action plan to take you into this new season that's all about growth and blooming with focus on what matters most and what you need most right now. You'll leave feeling refreshed, inspired, and alive with a roadmap to carry with you over the next few months. Here's what Shelly had to say about her virtual retreat experience. The virtual retreat you hosted was exactly what I needed and wanted, all caps. I felt like a breath of fresh air had been blown my way and cleared the cobwebs of anxiety, inertia, distractedness from my mind, body, and heart. You provided me with some concrete tools and encouragement to get grounded again, especially in these uncertain times, and to move forward taking little steps each day so that I can show up again in my life. It was just the perfect reset button for me. Now, if this feels like something you could use, would love to have you join us. Head over to KimberlyWilson.com slash virtual retreat to learn more. Marion Stewart is the author of Manage Your Menopause Naturally and 27 other books, a world-renowned healthcare expert. She's helped tens of thousands of women around the world overcome PMS and menopause symptoms without using drugs or hormones. In 2018, she was awarded the British Empire Medal and was recognized as one of the 50 most inspirational women by the Daily Mail. Visit her online at marionstewart.com. Well, welcome, Marion. Hello. Thank you for inviting me to be here. It's a treat to have you. Congratulations on this new book, Manage Your Menopause Naturally, the six-week guide to calming hot flashes and night sweats, getting your sex drive back, sharpening memory, and reclaiming well-being. Yes. It's a mouthful, right? (laughs) It is, but I wanted to explain on the title all that it does and says on the tin. So I think it's really important because women at this stage in their lives go through hell And for the most part, they actually don't know that there's any way back. They think our surveys show thousands of women think that this is the beginning of the end of life as they knew it. And it doesn't have to be that way. You know, I love that. And you really emphasize that in this book. And I I think it's so, so helpful. It like normalizes it and also encourages. And so what led you to write this book? Like, tell us a little bit about your experience. 
Oh, heavens, my background goes back a long way. I started out helping women with PMS years ago and based on 200 medical papers, some of which were published in the US. And before too long, we were finding that using the natural approach, over 94% of women were completely symptom-free within the space of four months, which was amazing without taking drugs or hormones. So I was on a crusade and I had a big team. And then in the 90s, there were lots of publications on menopause in really prestigious journals looking at the natural approach. And so eventually I tweaked the PMS program and turned it into a menopause program. And we went on helping women going through menopause with a five month program and 91% of them were symptom free within that time. And then I was going on during that time, I wrote lots of books on PMS and lots of other conditions, including menopause. And then in, at the end of 2016, I met someone showed me how to make Facebook live films. And I made four little really basic films on my phone, which was quite scary at the time. And over a million women saw those films within the space of 12 weeks. And I was absolutely swamped, inundated with the saddest, most horrendous stories of suffering. And I just thought this is all wrong. I know that our program helps women be symptom free. The science supports that and women are not getting the information. And that's borne out last year, there was a Mayo Clinic survey published showing that only 7% of doctors and gynecologists feel adequately educated to help women going through menopause. And so it's not surprising that women just get left to hang out to dry, really, consulting Dr. Google with varying degrees of help or not, because a lot of the packets of things that you find on the shelves supplement wise don't even contain what they say on the label and so many women we we've surveyed literally thousands and thousands of women they lose their self-esteem they lose their mojo their relationships break down some of them leave the workplace and in fact last year forbes said that menopause is actually lost productivity associated with menopause is costing 810 billion dollars globally each year. And so, you know, we're the, it's, it's the fastest growing sector in the workplace. We're supposed to carry on competing with men. We're expected to work into our 70s. How on earth can we do that if we're falling over with all sorts of symptoms at this stage in our lives and no one is teaching us how to have what I call a midlife refuel? Well, you know, I love that you just mentioned symptoms because as you're talking about this and I'm like, oh my gosh, all this lost labor, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, well, what are the symptoms that are that are contributing to that. And I know that they probably vary greatly among women, but I'm curious, what are you finding are like the main ones that are really causing the suffering? And can you speak a little, as you do mention these, to perimenopause? Because, you know, for those of us in our mid to late forties, I'm like, am I in there? Am I not? My doctor says, no, I'm like, I think I am. So anyway. Well, you know what? Perimenopause lasts for up to eight years and it leads up to menopause, which is the average age of 51. So in your early forties, you probably are going through perimenopause. Your our eggs and everything else reaches its peak by the time we're about 35 and it's downhill after that. And if you have babies and breastfeed, you're likely to have low levels of important nutrients which affect our brain chemistry and our hormones. And that makes us see the world through different colored lenses and feel all before our time. And that's without losing estrogen, which is the double whammy of making us feel even worse because a hundred years or so ago, we weren't living much past 50. And so it didn't really matter. But now when 40 something represents the halfway house, it matters a great deal. And the symptoms can vary so much that some women get what I call more physical symptoms, others get what I call more mental symptoms, and some poor women get all of them. So the commonest symptoms, apart, apart from the hot flashes and the night sweats, are things like insomnia, or it can feel that you've got PMS more days of the month, or there's no let up. And then you find it hard to sleep, you wake up in the night feeling wired, you maybe even feel anxious, have panic attacks and palpitations. You can feel really achy. Your joints ache, you feel tired all the time. And some women get headaches and they just feel like a shadow of their former selves. And that's not to mention the lost libido that our relationship survey showed us 70% of women feel they lose their libido at menopause. 
and over half of them have vaginal dryness. And again, they don't realize that they can do a U-turn and they can get it all back again. And um, a little question for you too. So you mentioned perimenopause is about eight years. So what is the average kind of time for menopause? Well, it can be, the literature says up to 10 years, but I've had patients in their seventies because if you think about it, if you've got low levels of nutrients and you don't redress the balance, and you've got empty estrogen receptor sites, which you have when the ovaries are no longer producing estrogen, then you're never going to come out of that. It's just going to happen because when you've got empty estrogen receptor sites, the brain tries to kickstart your ovaries back into function because it doesn't get the fact that the ovaries are not expected to carry on working. And as you, as it's trying to wake up the ovaries, it sends these thermal surges through your body, which we know as hot flushes or night sweats. And so it can happen in the long term unless you learn to meet your needs. And learning to meet your needs isn't that onerous. It's just knowledge. And once you get tanked up with that, it will last you for the rest of your life. And the great thing is that the program not only helps to overcome perimenopause and menopause symptoms, but it also helps us to prevent things that we're more predisposed to after menopause, like osteoporosis, the bone thinning disease, heart disease, dementia, and diabetes. So it's a really, it's not just a nice idea, it's really essential that every single woman has um, a map, if you like, a roadmap of, of how to get from where she is at midlife to back in the driving seat, all tanked up and turbocharged so that she can come out of the pit into the fast lane and really get on with her life and enjoy herself and, and just be the best version of herself. I love that. I'm sure most listeners are nodding going, yes, yes, I want that. <laughs> so let's talk about this six week program. Um, and I'd love to go week by week. And just if you could tell us a little bit about what you would expect in that week, or, you know, what are some tools or some tips that you give for okay. people? Yeah, so I, what I did was I took my five month program after I made those four films, and the million, million women watched them. I thought I have to get ready somehow to help groups of people. And so we took all the research behind the five month program and we split it into six modules. So it's a six week course and it's been running for the last three years, helping women and it runs virtually and live. So women go through this system in a bite sized chunk way rather than being overwhelmed. And in the first week I do a really fast track to the most common symptoms. So I just give them some advice and recommendations to get started with in terms of diet and supplements and lifestyle. And I focus on things like brain fog, anxiety, panic attacks, palpitations, hot flashes, night sweats, headaches, vaginal dryness, aches and pains. So we do all the big ones in the first week. In the second week, I'm focusing on nutritional deficiencies. How do you detect them? And how do you correct them? Because we've done five separate studies that show between 50 to 80% of women have got low levels of important nutrients like magnesium, iron, zinc, B vitamins, essential acid, fatty acids, calcium, vitamin D, and so on. And other researchers have now shown that literally billions of women around the world have low levels of nutrients. So the first thing we have to do is get our nutrients back into an option range. So Mother Nature is so brilliant at telling us what's going on in our body. So we've got things like the physical signs of vitamin and mineral deficiency. And that's, for example, affects your skin, your hair, your nails. So if you've got things like cracking at the side of your mouth, if you've got greasy skin, red patches at the side of your nose, if your hair is brittle, split, falling out, your nails are split and also breaking, or if you've got pimples on your upper arms and thighs, all of those things are likely to be associated with nutritional deficiencies. So in the book, what I'm doing is teaching women how to identify the nutritional deficiencies and then giving them the tools to correct them. So there are foods, list, lists, lists, with all the important nutrients and all your favorite foods so that you can choose the things you like as opposed to things you don't like. So that's week two. Week three, I'm focusing on mother nature's estrogen and that's uh, teaching women how to access it and why they need to access it and the amounts that they need to consume little and often so that they can fool the brain into thinking that there's normal circulating estrogen again. And that's really important. So 
Um, they're the fundamental things. And then going on from that, we're looking at things like um, the next week is supplements. So we're looking at all the science-based supplements from around the world that have been through properly conducted clinical trials. And according to your symptom set, you can choose the supplements and you've got information about the research behind them and also the doses that you need to take to get the therapeutic effect. And then I move on to things like, <clears throat> excuse me, to libido in the following week and stress and insomnia. And then after that, we're looking at um, mindset and sugar cravings and looking at the longer term. Do you know how, what do you do? Obviously before you're consumed with your symptoms and it makes you feel bad, but when you're symptom free, you've got the whole new blank canvas and then you need to look at, well, what, what are you gonna do with the next chapter of your life? And also after the six weeks that in the book, there are sections on good bone health and uh, preventing heart disease and looking after yourself in the long term. And then we've got all the recipes and menus and whether you like cooking or not, there's far, there are fast options for you. There are shopping lists, there's everything, as well as the diet diaries and symptom charts. So as you go through the book, you make a list of all the recommendations that you pull out so that you can actually develop your own program. Because on the actual six-week course, when women come on it, they fill in a questionnaire and we write the program for them. But obviously, when women are reading the book, they're doing it by themselves. And if you suffer mildly to moderately, or you're going through perimenopause and you're looking at prevention, then obviously you can do it yourself. And if you need extra help, then there's extra help as well. You can just come to our website and organize a call with either myself or one of my team. And we also have an assessment on the website and we've also launched the Midlife Refuel Club, which is something that people can join. And I do all sorts of live sessions and help them to overcome their symptoms. I love it. Midlife refuel. That sounds great. <laughs> so I'm curious kind of with regard to in particular, you know, the diet and the exercise, um, what are some of the things that you find like, Ooh, this is what I notice that many women are not getting in their diet that they need. Um, like, like kale, everyone needs more kale in their lives or, you know, is there anything in particular kind of like that? And from an exercise perspective, is there, you know, are you like, okay, get this amount of aerobic activity a day or a week? Like, what do you find is most necessary? I think uh, with the diet side of things, it's very individual. First of all, obviously, it depends when, whether people are vegan, vegetarian, whether they eat fish and so on. And um, the, the basic thing is not to skip meals, to eat wholesome food little and often and make sure you're getting all the food groups and all the nutrients. And I've got lots of sample menus in the book so people can follow those if they haven't got a clue or they can just look at the fast options and they can go through with that. As far as exercise is concerned, with COVID in the air at the moment, a lot of people have got elevated stress hormones, cortisol. And if you do big aerobic exercise, you can actually feel worse. So if you're not a big exerciser at the moment and you're just on the nursery slopes, it's important to maybe just do five or 10 minutes of dancing to your favorite music, maybe find something on YouTube if you can't get to the gym and just build up. And eventually to probably doing 45 minutes to an hour, five times a week and enjoy yourself. Just find the kind of exercise that you love to do so that it's a treat because exercise not only releases the endorphins that make us feel good, but it also speeds, speeds up our metabolic rate which is the rate at which our body ticks over. And so it helps us to get rid of the belly fat that collects around the middle at menopause for many women. And it also helps with joint health. So if you don't use your joints, you're gonna lose the function and they'll get stiff. So there are lots of reasons and oxygenating your brain is another one so that you can think more clearly. And a lot of the research shows that not only can you get rid of memory loss. So for example, you can reignite your short and long-term memory and your cognitive function, but also it has a really positive effect on your appearance. So I alluded to the fact before that your skin, your hair, and your nails can be affected. Well, going through this refuel, people find that their hair glows again, it gets stronger, the nails stop breaking. And the research has actually shown that you can reduce the depths of wrinkles quite significantly 
even within the space of 12 weeks. So it's almost like turning back your biological clock. And the first medical paper I ever read on the subject of the natural menopause was conducted in Australia, published in the British Medical Journal, and it showed that by giving women flax seeds and soy and red clover, they were able to bring a change in the vagina that they were, would expect if someone was taking hormones. So that was my first entry point to this. So it really does have a great effect on the inside and outside. And it, it helps women to get back in the driving seat and get back to feeling normal again or better than they can remember. Well, and you know what I love, like part two, right? A new beginning, you know, and you talk about menopause in the workplace, complementary therapies, um, even EFT, which I like, uh, looking after your heart and building new bone, which you mentioned these earlier. Is there anything that you'd like to say about kind of this part to a new beginning? Because I think, as you say, like this idea of like refueling and, you know, better than ever, you know, maybe even back to how you were before. Um, I think that's going to be enticing to our listeners. And so I'm just curious, is there anything here that you, you, you want to speak on? Yeah, I think so. Because what I did a book signing in Australia in theater where they were hosting the show Menopause, the musical, which was hysterical. <laughs> if anyone gets a chance to see that and they haven't, they should. It's very funny. But standing in the foyer for a few days, I was actually listening to the conversations of the women going past me. And they were basically saying, been there, done that, and got the T-shirt. And I'm thinking to myself, well, actually, they haven't. Because what they don't understand is that once the menopause symptoms have disappeared, menopause is actually one day in your life. It's the anniversary of your last period. And that the next day, you're postmenopausal. And you are then not protected from osteoporosis, heart disease, and dementia. And in fact, women get more heart disease than men do without, unless they take some proactive steps to get themselves into a better place. And so it's really important. And as human beings, we're not very good at prevention. You know, it, we tend to only do things when we're in pain. So it is important for women to take a few months, learn how to nurture themselves, have this midlife refuel, get back into the driving seat and just know that they can future-proof their house, which makes longevity a much, much better experience. And for women in the workplace, instead of just leaving the workplace because you don't feel you can cope anymore or you're embarrassed, and so many women do that, just hang on in there while you have your midlife refuel. Eventually, it will have no stigma when women can know that they can get this refuel in their 40s and get back to feeling good again. But for the most part, if you learn how to meet your needs, the brain fog will lift, you'll sleep better, even in the matter of weeks. I've just finished the last six week program before Christmas and two of the women were, well, one of them was, hadn't slept for more than two hours since she can't remember when in a stretch. And the other one had migraine headaches every day of her menstruating life that completely overwhelmed her. And within Probably I think the one with the migraines had one in the first week on the program and never had another one. And the one who hadn't slept within two or three weeks, she was sleeping peacefully all night. And so that makes a huge difference to how you feel. Obviously affects the quality of your life if you're not plagued and overwhelmed by those kind of symptoms. So it, as I said, it is an individual thing, but there's something for everybody. And, learn, and even if you're taking hormones, you can still learn how to get your nutrients into an optimum range because the hormones are not going to do that for you. And that's a really important aspect of your health and well-being as you get older. And what about kind of part three, let's eat. So you mentioned how you've got some recipes in here and things that are really great too for people who maybe they don't cook. Um, you've got this piece that I really liked, the diet do's and don'ts. Can you speak a little bit to that? So anything that might be enlightening to our listeners about really like how to, you know, as you said, even if you're taking hormones, you still need to make sure you're getting these nutrients. So are there certain things that you're like, do this, don't do this? <laughs> yes, definitely. So in the beginning, when we know that most women have got low levels of important nutrients, we're taking out of the diet things that may impede the absorption of those nutrients even further. So things like tannin in red wine and tea, will lock on to calcium, magnesium, iron, and zinc. So in the short term, we're asking people to avoid those. And some phytates in some other foods, some grains, also can lock on to nutrients. So we're trying to really get nutrients 
back into a good range. And it's not a life sentence. So for everything we ask someone to ditch for a while, there are two or three other alternatives that they can, and they can find things that they really like. And it's not difficult at all these days. So it's making sure that you also consume naturally occurring estrogen. So having some soy and flax seeds, maybe edamame beans, and just taking the stimulants and things like uh, hot spicy foods and hot drinks out. You can still drink warm drinks, but the, if you're having flashes and you drink a hot drink, it's likely to bring on a flush. So there's all, and there are just so many other things to do for the diet. But in terms of how hard or easy it is, I just to demonstrate, I was in London some years ago and I went to national magazines because we'd done a survey on the workforce and found that they were all feeling awful because most of them were working from morning till night and not eating properly. So I stopped at the local supermarket and I bought two bags of fast food, but it was all healthy fast food. And I went in there and I just showed them how they could make breakfast, lunch and dinner and have snacks at their desk without kicking anything. And so I'm quite mindful that a lot of people don't like cooking. And there are lots of fast options and shopping lists with the fast options so that it can be really easy. It doesn't have to be difficult and you don't have to be a slave in the kitchen in order to get well again. However, if you like cooking, then there are lots of recipes and meal plans for all kinds of things from starters to yummy desserts. And speaking of yummy desserts, you mentioned earlier about sugar. And so I'm just curious for, um, you know, those of us who really like sugar and struggle with sugar, um, you know, it's interesting data out there, right? They say that it's seven times more addictive than cocaine. And so I'm just curious, like, what have, are you anti-sugar um, or how do you encourage women to get less of it in their diet? So I believe a little what, of what you fancy does you good. However, in the old days, I did a book on sugar cravings and because we found that 80% of women with PMS craved sugar in their premenstrual week. And some of them were driving out after dark to get multiple bars of chocolate. Uh, we even found women who were stealing Easter eggs from their children and eating the uh, Christmas decorations before Christmas. <laughs> so it's just uh, men don't do that. They Men brag about how much chocolate they eat. That's very interesting. It's another whole subject. But the reason that you crave sugar is that you've got low levels of, of, of trace mineral called chromium. And chromium, you're only born with about a sixteenth of an ounce of chromium and it gets less as you get older. And also magnesium and B vitamins are necessary for normal blood glucose control. So we teach women how to put those nutrients back into their body by consuming foods that are rich in those and maybe taking some supplements as well. And within the space of about six weeks, the cravings are gone completely. So they don't have this uh, hankering for chocolate. They're eating much more. They still can have sweet food. It's not sugar-free diet. But it is a, a, a modified diet in the beginning. And definitely, unfortunately, chocolate contains caffeine. So as much as we love it, it is off the menu in the very short space of time. But there are plenty of lovely, lovely things that you can have instead. So and again, things that you can buy that are sweet or things that you can make like blueberry muffins with almond flour and all sorts of nice whipped desserts that you can have that are equally satisfying. And after a while, your tastes do change. Having said that, I do love dark chocolate. And after my dinner in the evening, I have a square of it. And I think, you know, as I said, a little of what you fancy does good in the long term. But you need to get yourself back into really good shape and symptom free. And once you're feeling well, then you can play around with it. And you know where the boundaries are. And you know how to put it all back together again, because you're armed with that knowledge. Beautiful. Well, any, before I ask you my last question, any final thoughts you'd like to share with our listeners about managing your menopause naturally? I think the main thing is to say that it's possible and not even just naturally, the fact that you can manage it and get back to feeling better than you can remember and that it doesn't have to be the end of life as you knew it. You don't have to sacrifice your self-esteem, your waistline and your relationships or your work life you can have it all. It just involves a bit of homework. And while COVID is in the air and people are in their bubbles, it's a, a really opportune time to learn to meet your needs and get yourself back to the point where when the world opens up, you're ready to relaunch and 
just do anything you fancy doing because we're so wise when we get to midlife. We don't really want to waste that wisdom uh, and, and be too unwell to offer our gifts to others and the rest of the world. Beautiful. Love it. Thank you. Well, my last question, Marion, is the name of this book or the name of the podcast is Tranquility Du Jour. And so I always like to ask guests, how do you find tranquility in your everyday? I do two things. In the morning, I try and exercise to music and preferably outdoors if I can. And that get, leaves me feeling as high as a kite. And the other thing I do, hopefully in the afternoon, if I have time, or if not at the end of my working day, is I do a guided meditation for half an hour. And that takes me into a really deep, relaxed place and brings me out again so that I feel like I've been recharged a bit like my phone. And that also helps me to rewire my brain uh, because there's a lot going on in my working day, as you can imagine. Um, And it's very varied. And um, I'm working over different time zones as well. So I really do need to do that. And as long as I practice, obviously I eat well, but I don't, um, I still have my treats and I feel that it's okay. It's a really enjoyable way of life and important that I invest in myself so that I can be strong and well to help other people. Beautiful. Thank you so much for being with us today and congrats on your new book. Thank you so much. So in the show notes, you'll find ways to find Marion on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, along with a link to her book. So thanks as always for tuning in. A reminder that we have the TDJ Insiders Facebook group, and we're currently reading a phenomenal book, and I would love to have you join us, and happy International Women's Month. Also receive free weekly love notes directly to your inbox with invites, inspiration, and more. Browse my six books and planner. And then there's a link to shop seasonless, vegan, locally made, eco-friendly fashion, TDJ. And then if you have a moment to share a review of this podcast on Apple Podcasts or any of my books on Amazon or Goodreads, would be so, so grateful. Details at KimberlyWilson.com slash review. So thank you as always for tuning in and wishing you a wonderful, delightful week ahead. And I look forward to seeing you on the 21st. Mm-hmm.